everybody, I'm Tom Vassell. Today we're taking a look at a game called Trudvang Legends. Now, Trudvang Legends was shown to me several years ago um, at Gen Con, and Simon was very excited about it, talking about it being some new game changer in the industry, and I was very curious about it. It was run on Kickstarter, and then they announced, hey, the Kickstarter successfully funded it, but we're not happy with the game. They rebooted the entire game, and we now have it in our hands. Trude Bang Legends. Now, I don't know, folks, what the original game was like that much. I don't remember what they said. I just remember them saying it was innovative and new and stuff. There's a little bit of innovative stuff here, but this is kind of an adventure style game. I think it's Viking-esque um, here. And so what you're doing is you are cooperatively with some folks going through some adventures together. There's a lot of games that do that. Let's take a look at how this one works. So I'm not going to go over every rule of this game, but I want to give you a feel of how it plays. I'm also going to not spoil the game. I'm going to show you a few things in the game, but hopefully what I show you is fairly out of context. You're not going to see much more at the beginning of the game other than what I'm showing you here now. Although there will be enemies on the board, so there might be, let's say, some enemies in this zone here. You'll notice, I don't want it to show these boards, because this board has these sleeves in it that you'll put things in, so there's like a starting location, for example, for the very first scenario, and you'll put this in, but this is important because if you're done playing the game, you just fold the whole game up, and when you're ready to play again, you can open it up, and all that stuff stays on the board. This board here has rules, like this talks about how to level up, what happens if you're defeated, and then there's phases, and the phases is how you play the game. You'll just go through each phase, and you can see there's, a fa there's something on phase two, three, and four, which means that you might have more things at it. And there is a giant deck of story cards that I don't want to, again, spoil too much, but all kinds of things might happen. Like you might find more locations on the board. You might find items. You might find companions who will join you. You might get a title. You might um, just have some sort of event happen to you or get a sort of side quest that you can find. Now, how is all this put together? Here we have the Book of Sagas. So this is, for kids, this is basically what an app used to look like when we called them books. But in this, you'll start a specific campaign. So this is the introductory campaign, C1, Child of Light. When you do a campaign, you're going to be using this board here. And this board, which honestly, this is my weak, my biggest component complaint. But you will slide things in. So this shows, for example, Venture Sheet C2. This is Venture Sheet C1. You will slide this into here. At various points in the game, you might come across, you know, checkpoint F. Then you just open this door and it will tell you something that happens. Um, and there's just different things that will happen. But many times they'll refer to this book. This book itself here, so when you start a campaign, this will say, take Adventure Sheet 1, put it in the book, place all the heroes here, reveal some enemy cards, place this, the, some monsters on the board, and place point of interest A. At this point, players will start playing the game. And when you get to different points, you might read different paragraphs in this book. When you're done, you can go to the next quest in the book. However, you might get side quests. So there are 20 quests in here, but not every quest is required to complete the game. Some of them are side quests that you can go on, but you have to kind of reveal them. You might have to do something or go to a spot that doesn't follow the main quest to get there. I don't want to say a whole lot more about it, but I want to say the writing in here is fine. I didn't notice a lot of problems with it. It's not particularly amazing, but it's also good. It's very Viking-esque as you go through and do these things. So when you play a game, you're going to need this, this sheet to match the mission you're at. Because again, when you get to a certain point of interest, you'll pull the door off of that particular area and see what it shows. Some things might take you on these adventure maps, and these adventure maps, you kind of just move in here, and it's kind of almost like a straight choose-your-own adventure. 
So knowing how that is, you're going to be playing through the game. You're going to be going to different areas, reading spots from the book, fighting enemies. Each player is going to have a various hero. So you'll pick one of the heroes. So let's say, for example, I pick Felerion. And they're going to have on their card, you'll notice a bunch of runes thrown into their bag. So the two water runes, four wind runes, three earth runes, one fire rune, and then five of the dark runes is thrown into your bag. You also see they have a special ability. Players are also going to start with uh, a few pieces of starting equipment. Each person has various equipment that you can spend to do different things. And this is gonna matter because you have two trackers here at the top of the board. One of them is going to keep track of your life, and the other is going to keep track of chronicle points. Many things will give you chronicle points, which you can spend to activate cards and abilities and things like that. Let's talk briefly, though, about combat. Um, you might end up fighting some bad guys. When I say you might, you're 100% going to fight up bad guys. You have a deck of feats. Now, this deck of feats is made up of cards from your class and cards from your hero. Although in this game, there's only one class for each hero or one hero for each class. So I, don't, I guess they're looking at future expansions, I suppose. But anyway, you're going to shuffle these cards. And as the game goes by, you have the opportunity to upgrade these. So you can see this is Battle Chant 1. Well, guess what? As the game goes by, you can go up to Battle Chant 2. So you're going to shuffle these in a combat, and you're going to draw four of them that you'll place out in front of you. So I got Strike 1, Strike 1, Battle Chant 1, and Brave Ballot 1. You're then going to take your runes, and you're going to pull three of these runes. And I'm like, okay, I pulled two greens and a water. So I put a green here and here. I'm going to activate Battle Chant and put my water in Brave Ballot. I can stop or draw more. Pshaw, draw more, baby! So I draw some more, and now I get a fire and two of these negative runes. Both negative runes go up here in this little row that has five spots in it. I'm going to put the fire here on strike, though, because I really want to hit the guy. And you know what? I'm going to draw three more. Now I get a green, a blue, and another negative one. The negative goes up here. The green and the blue I can't place down here, so they also go up here, which causes me to kind of bust. Now, the way this works is if you ever bust, all the red tokens that are here go off. There's always minus two hit points there, but you can get more red tokens as the game goes by. If you stop while you're in the blue, you get a chronicle point, and if you have any other blue tokens there, you will get them. Either way, the monster's then going to swing at you, and you're going to use their enemy attack. They'll draw a card. This is plus zero to his attack of two, but there's all kinds of cards, minuses and pluses, in the deck for the monster to hit you. You might have something defensive on here, like my battle chant here gives me some armor, and it also lets me spend two chronicle points to cancel the enemy's special ability. All right, well, that helps. I would like to hit him back, but unfortunately, I didn't fill up my strikes. But if I had filled up my strikes, I could then hit him back for damage. And that's kind of a round of combat. You're just going to keep going through a round of combats until you either kill them or they kill you. Death here is not permanent. You get to come back. I guess you're knocked out or wounded and dragged back to a base. There are repercussions, which I'm not going to get into because they delve into the story, but you will be fighting a lot. The game also has tests that you will come across sometimes where you will pull, let's say there's a fire test too, so you reach in your bag, pull out seven tokens, and you need two fire, which in this case I did not get. But that's basically how you succeed in a test. At different camps and different places, you will be able to upgrade and add or subtract runes to your bag. This being a Simon game, of course, there's really cool miniatures. These are bosses. There's three big boss miniatures you'll fight. There's other miniatures here where you have you have the skeleton you just saw and archers and these wolf things and minotaurs. There's actually not a lot of diversity between the bad guys. There's also another tray here where you'll put all the good guys in a little gray. They're Simon miniatures. So, of course, everything is very well done and good quality. But that's kind of the game. I, again, I don't want to tell you too much more about it other than to say, again, you're going to be going through a saga a bit at a time and discovering all sorts of story. You realize there is 
126 pages of paragraphs and paragraphs on each, and that's coupled with this huge pile of story cards that's also going to come in, plus one of these adventure sheets for each adventure that you go on. So there's a lot going on in the game. Let's go to final opinions. There's a lot to talk about in this game, so let's start with um, essentially just different parts of it. Production value, I'm mostly okay with the, 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 the minis are fine. Although I really wish they had added triple the different types of monsters. I wish they had done fewer models of each monster and just had more different monsters. This is Seamon, they make a ton of different things. It got a little like, oh, it's these guys again. In fact, even the bosses was kind of like a, you've defeated me, but I'll be back. Type, at least one of those moments happened and I was like, that's so you can use the same model again. Um, but the models are fine. The draw bags are too small, honestly. You need to be putting your hand in there all the time. They should have been bigger bags. I'm sorry. If I need to pull stuff from a bag all the time, these need to be bigger. And I was disappointed by that. And then just tons of little tokens. I also didn't like the fact that the cards all look the same. They have a symbol on them. They're not colored in any way. They're, those decks of cards are very boring looking. And sorting, I have to make sure I have them all sorted out in bags ahead of time. But I, maybe you can mix class cards later on in another game. I don't know. I just felt like that, there's just a little, some production things like that I wasn't as excited about. I'm happy with the writing. The writing is fine. You go through here, it has interesting choices. You can follow uh, side threads. There doesn't seem to be a lot of red herrings here and they might open up another adventure. And I was pretty happy with how the writing went. I haven't seen everything, but a lot of what I saw, I was pretty happy with. There's some interesting things and it definitely has that whole Nordic thing going on. And I, I enjoyed that. The art seems to be fine also. So the gameplay itself, it, it takes a bit to get used to because it is the rule book is not particularly amazing. It's not bad, but man, oh man, this game is, it's unique. They're like, okay, just follow these points, these patterns. And so you're like, okay, I can move. And then if there's an enemy there, I fight the enemy. If there's no enemy, I draw some random event card. Or if there's a point of interest, I deal with that point of interest. So you run to these, there's like three points of interest. You're like, let's go to that one. You go look at it. It's like, okay, you found an item. Okay, now we'll go to this one. This one gives us a choice. Do you want to go here or here? We go to this one. This one reveals more points of interest. That's great. An expanding map and also the fact that you can save it, close everything up anytime you want. That's fantastic. Like I said, it's fun to go through the stories. Combat is interesting and it's unique. Pulling out those cards, pulling rooms in the bag, putting them out there. I didn't dislike combat. I like the push your luck aspect of it. I will say by the 80th time you do the combat, you're gonna go, okay, this is starting to feel samey. And yes, you upgrade your cards and you can upgrade your rune bag, but it didn't feel that particularly exciting to upgrade your rune bag. I threw one more fire rune in. I'll pour more fire. And then as soon as you do that, the next thing will be like, do a test that involves water. Great. The test, by the way, I failed like 90% of them because they're just random. There's no way to mitigate the tests. And I did not like that at all. The tests are my least favorite part of the game because you just pull runes from a bag and hope for the best. Come on now. Um, the whole rune pulling from a bag, I know that it's an innovative system for this game. Woo! But is it? Fun. See, that's the thing. Yes, it's neat. There's a little deck of cards and you upgrade that deck of cards and you have cards and you can assign to runes of those cards and then you push your luck and you want to draw more runes because you want to activate all four of your cards. But extra runes you draw can make negative things happen to you and then the enemy hits you. But none of it feels like, woo! It's more like I pulled runes. Oh, okay, I matched these. Okay, and then it feels like you're doing a math problem. The enemy's going to hit me, but if I spend runes here and I can use this item and I'll spend these chronicle points. And it just felt like the story is fun. And the, the ideas and the concepts are cool. But the combat and the test slog the game down. To the point where you almost want to just go, I won! But you can't do that because then you're taking on half the game. My rating for this game, True Dragon Legends, is a 6. I don't dislike the game. I think the game is fine. There's a lot of cool aspects to it. Simon puts a good production in. And I think some people will really like it. This is kind of one of those things where I think a lot of it's just not for me. 
Uh, the pulling the runes from the bag is something I thought I would enjoy more, but it's just kind of, it just feels uber lucky to me. The tests, meh. And even the combat, I don't know exactly what's in the bag at any given point. I can add some runes to the bag, and you often add the negative runes to the bag, so you want to keep adding runes to your bag, but it never feels like a deck building game or a bag building game where I have this cool control over the bag. Now nah, you just throw more stuff in there and then hope for the best in the combat. Yes, you can decide when to stop. The push your luck aspect, that part works, but it's usually kind of like, well, I'm doing no damage, so I might as well pull more runes from the bag. Yes, I might go into the red zone, but pff, I'm not doing anything anyway, and the monster's just going to hit me. So I never felt like the fighting decisions were remarkably cool. Again, I felt like a complicated math equation. That is counterbalanced by the interesting stories. I like the fact that side quests show up. I like those little mini-maps. And so it's kind of a mix, it's a hodgepodge of there's good stuff and bad stuff. Is the game remarkably innovative? No, although those sleeves in the card to keep the cards there when you fold the board up, that's cool. But at the end of the day, there's a lot of adventure games out there right now. There's a lot of them. This one doesn't particularly stand out other than if you want to play a Nordic theme, then you have it. This is cool. And if you like that bag pulling mechanism, then you're also going to enjoy this in that regard. But beyond that, I think that for me, this is one where I was like, that was okay. It was an interesting game to play. Now let's move on to the next game. So that's Trudvang Legends. I'm Tom Vassell. We'll see you next time.